Here with Eric Birchfield and John Bushema from the New Jersey band Elephant Goes West. Uh, fellas, it's uh, great to have you here today. Uh, thanks for having us, Jimmy. Glad to be here. Uh, we have this lovely park bench in this nondescript location here in New York City. Wanted to give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves to our fine audience. How come we aren't in the uh, studio with the lights and the fancy equipment? Well, the studio, it's actually it's being renovated this week. I had a friend who was in there like two days ago, and she said it was fine. Dude, your, your friend is lying to you, bro. This is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, came across you guys late last year, pretty much by accident, walked into one of your shows in Brooklyn, and I was struck by two things, uh, your phenomenal musicianship and the undeniable influence of Paul McCartney that I heard in your songwriting. Were you guys like born under the recording console in, in Abbey Road Studios or something? Yeah, well, I, I might have been born there. I know I was conceived there. <laughs> Am I wrong, though, in hearing this strong McCartney influence in your songs? Not at all. Uh, the Beatles are, will always be my favorite band, and my favorite Beatle will always be Paul, the cute one. And uh, uh, they're probably my foremost biggest influence in my songwriting, would be Paul McCartney. Does that go for you as well? The Beatles, they're kind of like the Bible of making music, and Paul's kind of like Jesus. Now, when it comes to songwriting, do you guys collaborate Lennon and McCartney style on all of your songs? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes uh, a song will be... 50-50 split right down the middle of collaboration. Sometimes I'll come to John with a song that's you know 95% of the way there, and I just need John to t tighten it up. And, you know. and do you focus more on the music and John the lyrics, or how does how does your songwriting process itself work? I'm uh, I'm a melody guy, and that doesn't necessarily mean lyrics, but I'm hearing the voice section, the vocal part. John is an arranger. John, I'll it'll be a skeleton of a song, and I'll take it to John. And, Give it its meat. Do a lot of the production work, um, getting the sounds, figuring out what direction to take a song in, and how to establish the groove, and you know, make it sit right. I've been in the studio with you. Uh, what are some of the, the techniques that you use <laughs> to make some bizarre sounds? Uh, one time we had a washing machine that we hit with a mallet. The neighbors enjoyed that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, beer bottles with bottle caps in it. Um, you know, producer shouldn't give away his secrets. Now, I know you guys love to overdub. Uh, what's the uh, Guinness record uh, for you guys in terms of the number of overdubs you put on a you put on one song? I'm not sure. Um, we can get up to like 80 to 100 tracks yeah. on any given. A bit obsessive compulsive, don't you think? Yeah. 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 In the past, you've said that your music comes first and then your lyrics. Uh, how did you actually describe that to me the first time we talked about it? Um, so you have a song, and it's a finished song except for the lyrics sit around and you play it and you speak in tongues practically until something sits right. So it's just total gobbledygook. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Seuss. But when the words finally do come, do you find that they have particular meaning to you or is it just what sounds good, what what no. fits the, the melody? No, it, they do have <laughs> meaning. It's, it's all from the subconscious. Uh, you know, I'll be spouting nonsense until this turn of phrase that I can write 25 pages about if I wanted to pops out and that's, that's how I write. What do you like to write about? Um, drunks. Drunks? Yeah. Uh, being drunk or being around drunks? Both. Both. Uh, big fan of Charles Bukowski, you know, the famous drunk author. I love drunk authors, so I like writing about drunks, be it desperate drunks or happy drunks, or love it. That's what and, I write about. And John, you share this, uh, this pastime? Uh, I don't do a lot of lyric writing myself. But you do a lot of drinking. Eh. As much as the next guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, you guys also have an alter ego. Elephant Goes West uh, itself is your primary band, but you go by another name as well, the, the Keepers of Stilltown. What's, what's that about? Yeah, uh, we're in the Keepers of Stilltown, which uh, we're the backing band for this enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped, wrapped in pork roll called uh, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy Lloyd. You guys play with Jimmy Lloyd. The one and yeah. only Jimmy Lloyd. Yeah. We're, we're pretty lucky. I mean, I've heard of him, but I can't say I've ever known anybody who's gotten that close to him. What, what's, what's he really like? It's dangerous. You never know. Uh, you don't want to turn your back to him. He might hit you in the back of the head with a blunt object or something. <laughs> He's got a lot of pressure. He's got a lot on yeah. his plate right now. Yes, very famous. Very famous and yeah. shady individual. Well, I think you guys have a really wonderful future ahead of you. I consider myself really lucky to, to know you as friends and also as fellow bandmates, and I just wish you the absolute, the absolute best of luck. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy. So sweet. Such a gentleman. Scholar.
songwriter, lyricist, poet. Very cut. <laughs>